Hi everyone. I decided today to show you how to make foxtail loop and loop chain. This is a piece of it right here. I'm going to um, show you some samples of this at the end, so don't you don't need to see this right now. But this is a, a simple loop and loop chain that you can make with fuse links, and it goes a little bit faster than the woven chain that I showed in the other um, video series. So this is what it looks like when you make it. This is the type that you can purchase. And I'll, I, I will go in really carefully and zoom in on these so you can see the differences. Um, you can kind of get away with buying the, the machine-made one because it looks very similar to the handmade one. It just looks a little different, and I kind of like the differences. But anyway, so I'm going to show you how to do this. What I thought I would do first, though, is explain kind of the materials that you needed. So first and foremost, you're going to need a solderite or some type of soldering block that is nice and smooth and flat because you are going to be fusing fine silver links. And in this case, we're using 22 gauge fine silver, soft, okay? I don't think fine silver comes in hard, half hard, but it might, but just go ahead and get dead soft. So I've got a few here that I've already done, but I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second anyway. You're also going to need some brass wire, actually copper wire would work as well. I just have brass available, my copper wire I gave to all my students this last semester. So um, 20 gauge, a little bit bigger, and we're gonna use it to kind of help hold the tail end of the chain together. Um, I've got a little sample one right here that I have a piece of stainless steel on the end, but I think that the brass might work a little bit better. This is when I started earlier, I'll put it off to the side. But, so 22 gauge fine silver, 20 gauge, brass. You could probably use 22 gauge brass, whatever you can find at the hardware store. This is something I got at Ace Hardware. So, um, You're also going to need a pair of round nosed, tiny pliers, chain mail pliers. I call them chain mail pliers. I don't think that's technically what their name is, but um, anything that has a tiny little round, really small head. Okay. You're going to need those. You're also going to need something to cut the coil of wire after we make it. So I either use my solder snips that I talked about in the previous videos, or a good pair of, this is probably large, you could probably get away if you have a really good pair of scissors. I know that seems really crazy. This material is so thin and so soft, you can cut through it with regular scissors. So that's kind of the hand tools you're gonna need. You're also going to need, once we get to the weaving part, I'm just gonna move these out of the way, you're going to need the same weaving tool that I talked about in the last one, except for this time, instead of using the tip we used last time, which I can't, I thought I had here and I can't find it, we're gonna be using a slightly different diameter tip. Uh, oh, here it is. So, if you can see that, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, you're gonna need, you can see, the one I used for the last one, is a bigger diameter than this one. So I'll, I'll, I'll gauge these again and give you a, an ex explanation of what they are. The, um, the one I used for the last video is eight gauge. This new one is 11 gauge, 12 gauge, 10 gauge. It's more like 11 gauge, which is 0 0.091, well, 0.1, 0 0.102, something like that. Um, it's just a smaller diameter, okay? And the reason is, if you use this big one too much, it's gonna enlarge the holes of your chain too large and then you're kind of, you're making a chain that is not gonna compress right and you're gonna thin the material out too much to where when you start to pull it down, it's gonna break. So if you can see the difference there between those two sizes, that's kind of what you want. You want the small one. The I briefly talked about this tool. Uh, my friend Susan made these for us in class, and she actually made us a tip that was this diameter on one side and this diameter on another side. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and this is just kind of a, a nitpicky thing, this size diameter actually fits into this pin vise really well, this one that I bought, for, I think I bought this pin vise from Rio. So it's pretty simple to put this one directly into the pin vise and tighten it down. This new di diameter that I have is so small that you couldn't pin it directly into this. This is a pin vise that doesn't have an, uh, a changeable collet insert on the inside. So it's only one, it really only fits one diameter wire. So what I had to do, and this is what she did for our class, is on top of this piece of steel, 
that I have that I tapered the end down. I had some aluminum tubing that perfectly telescoped onto the end of that. And this piece of tubing fits inside this collet. So I slid that over the end. It kind of is loose right now. You can see it's loose a little bit. Um, I slid it over the end and then I grabbed my crimping pliers, which are down. Of course, I put them up thinking that I wasn't going to need okay. them. Okay, I apologize. I'll try to edit some of that out. <laughs> so um, put the tube on there and then just use the first part of your crimps and kind of crimp that wire onto that piece of steel. Kind of keep rotating it and do it repeatedly. Eventually it'll kind of stick on there, okay? Then that is, is kind of on there, doesn't move. And you can put, the reason I have extra hits hanging off, this has a hole down inside of it and I needed it a little bit longer than the other one. So now I can slide that down in that, let me take the top off. I can slide that down in that vise like that. Okay, and I can put the top back on and tighten it up, maybe. Well. There we go. Okay, so I got that one in there instead, so the smaller one, okay? So, that's that. You're also going to need to make, if you don't want to purchase, you need to make um, a jig or a crank of sorts to make these size rings. Now, for 22 gauge fine silver, I like to use a 3 8 diameter brass tube or a 5 16 5 16 is a little bit smaller than this, and I actually think that's what I use to make um, these links. This is a 3 8 I can't find my 5 16 so I'm going to show you how to use this, but just keep in mind that these are a tiny bit smaller than what I've got going on here. In fact, I can, I can kind of hold that up to that. Right now, they're about the same size as this, which means I probably made them on one that was just a tiny bit smaller than this, and when you cut them and stuff, they swell open a little bit, so they, they change shape a little bit. Anyway, so 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths. Both of them should work. You shouldn't have a problem using either one. I, I, I made these a little bit smaller, and that seems to work better for me. Um, I have, you can get this brass tubing in like different sizes. I make my own cranks, so you can kind of like basically just take a piece of straight tube, bend it in two spots, and you see how that makes a crank, right? Then I drill a hole all the way through it, and you can put a wire through there, and then you can use this thing to crank jump rings. You do not have to do this. You can probably purchase these at this size. Off the top of my head, I can't remember if you... If, I just think it's cheaper to do it this way. And it's easier, I think, because it, these, the, these rings for this process, they do not need to be perfect because we're going to cut them with scissors. So basically, I'm going to zoom out again so you can see a little bit more of the tools. So basically the way I would do this, I would use my draw plate from that I explained in the last video. Um, we're, we are going to use the draw plate down here to smooth out the chain, but you can use the top holes that you've drilled to help you make... That one's a little too tight. You can use the top hole up here to help you make the chain, okay? So I usually put this in a vise. I get my crank ready by pulling it all the way up to where the hole's almost there. And then I have my coil of wire. I'm just going to kind of use this brass one here just to show you how to do this. I'm going to pull a little bit of this out. So I would put this through the crank, kind of hold it up against there, and you can just start cranking, okay? And you just keep... Go make it about three inches long. You'll pull this off. The wire that's in there is holding it in position. So you can go back and cut it and you pull off the whole coil. Here's a small one that I made. I'm just gonna show you a small one. Um, comes off and it's like a spring, okay? Fine silver is so soft that at this size, if you sat on it, it would just, it would completely compress and flatten. So don't be careful with it. But um, when you pull it off, you are then going to take either your little scissors or your solder snips, and I'm just using this small one as an example. I'm not gonna cut this one. You're gonna go inside. Let's see if I can show you that. You're gonna go inside. Let's see if it'll focus. You're gonna go inside and start cutting, okay? And you just wanna try to make sure you cut a straight line. And you cut all the rings, really simple. 
Doesn't matter if they get crimped, doesn't matter if the, the cut's not pure, because what you're gonna end up with are just a whole thing of these rings, okay? And since we're fusing them, if the, if the cut area where you cut it is a little weird, most of the time when you, when you fuse it, it goes away. So this is kind of, this was, I think, two or three coils of wire. I don't have any more fine silver, actually. This is a stand-in. <laughs> I made all these, and I just made them this way because this is really what I only use the fine silver for. So um, I have tons of them, okay? So that's how, what they kind of look like. You're then going to take, this is, this is the part that I was trying to explain in the other videos, these chains, the only white reason that these take a little bit longer is the setup. So I'm going to show you, here's one of the little rings. You can see it's got a big gap in it. I'm gonna very carefully take my fingers and get it to where that joint is as tight as possible. You almost can't see it, okay? And when you do that, you gotta keep doing that. When I'm done with that, I'm then going to, I'm gonna zoom in here and show you this. Angle it down a little bit. There's the ones already set up. So wherever the joint is on that ring, I place it down, okay? So I'm gonna use my little, tiny little um, tweezers, and I'm gonna get that to where that joint down. So the joint is right there, the seam, okay? Um, I've already fused these other ones. I started the video earlier and I didn't like the way it was going, so I started over. But <laughs> So, there's one right there that hasn't been fused. This one got messed up, and I'll show you what happens. I'm going to use that one as a sample over here to show you what happens when they get messed up. These look pretty good, and I'll show you what to do with those once they're done. I'm just going to move them over a little bit. You can go ahead and line your entire solder brick with these things. I usually do like 100 to 150 of them at a time. Um, just for the video, I'm not going to do that. But um, I purchased a, I briefly talked about this in the other video and I, I delete, didn't really talk about it. I purchased a little, um, it's called a VersaFlame. Basically it's a creme brulee torch. Dremel had these for a while. I, I got mine at Lowe's. I walked in, it was like 40 or $50, but it had been marked down to 12 something or 13 something, so I bought it because my other one broke. Cheap versions of this do not last. Runs on butane, you fill it up in the bottom. I have my butane tank over here. You, um, this one's pretty fancy. It's got like an adjust for the flame size on this side. This is a, a button that you can push to hold and it keeps the flame on so you don't have to keep your thumb on the back. It's even got a safety thing so p kids can't come up and just start to light it, okay? I'm gonna use this because I can put out a really tiny, small flame and I don't have to worry about nuking through anything. If you have a Smith um, air acetylene torch, just use the tiniest, tiniest tip that you have and don't give it very much you know, gas. It, they work just as well. Either one works fine. I think the butane, though, is a little cleaner of a flame, and I haven't had any issues with this. I just use one of these because it's easy. You can use these inside. Just be careful. So, um, all I'm going to do, and let me zoom back in on the ring so you can kind of see this. I'm going to, I already have this torch flame set up, so let me light it, and then I'll show you what size I turn it all the way down. Let's see if it'll focus. Who was doing this earlier? Can you kind of see that? I'll put my hand behind it. It's pretty small. It's about a half an inch. Okay, that's probably even a little too too big. You can make it even smaller than that. So, the one here in the front, I'm gonna do this from the side so you can see this. I usually start about, you know, a half an inch back. That's why I like to have about an inch between each course that I'm getting ready to fuse. I heat up the brick, you can see it heating up, and then once that gets warm, I go in and focus on the joint. And that one messed up. So that's a good example to show you what happens. I did, must not have had it close enough together and see it just starts to pull back and make a lump. I did the same thing with this one here. It got messed up too. So don't, you know, you're gonna mess a few of them up. Let me pull another one out real quick and we'll make another one. I'm just gonna leave the flame going because it's not gonna use too much to. Don't pick it up, it's hot. So I'm gonna wait. Um, let me grab my tweezers and I'll set this one on the. So I'll do another one real quick so you can see it. flashes and then you're done basically okay then I'm gonna go down a little bit 
You know what you're gonna do? These have already been done and they're cool. We're gonna move that one off because it's kind of warm. You're gonna take your little pliers. Okay. And you're going to put them inside the links and pull. Don't go crazy. If you pull too hard, it'll it'll um it'll actually stretch the link, and you don't want to do that either. I'm doing these on here so then when I'm done I can zoom in on them and you can see them. Simple, right? Just like that. You're basically making elongated ovals. Can you guys see that? Here, I'll pick one of them up. These are cool. I'll pick one up and show it to you with my hand. See if it'll focus. There. So you're making those. And you need a lot of them. I can't tell you how many. It just depends on how many you're going you're gonna to use. I say go ahead and make, you know, a hundred of them to start with and then you can kind of go from there. So this chain has a lot of setup. You need all the right tools, you gotta, you gotta fuse all the links. Um, the beauty of fine silver, you don't have to pickle anything, you don't have to clean anything. You just start from with these and you start weaving. Um, I'm going to make the woven part where I show you how to weave it into a second part, so that'll be in another video. But just to rehash, I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of get a little bit of better look of everything that's here. Just to go back and, and, and touch on what you should have. Soldering board, fine silver, 22 gauge, some kind of metal to help hold the chain when you start, and I'll explain that in the next part of the video. You're going to need a torch of some kind to fuse the chain, and then you're going to need some type of mandrel that you've made out of a, a stiffer material. I just use brass because it's readily available. You could use steel if you could find it, but that big piece of steel would be a nightmare. So this is just, um, this right here is a 3 8 inch piece of brass tubing. On these I think I used 5 16 I'm just telling you that because if you're going to buy it, I would go ahead and just buy a 5 16 because that would probably be better. I actually have a page that Susan Woodon said gave us in our class that explains the different gauges of wire and what size diameter works really well to weave these chains if you wanted to say go up to like 20 gauge wire or jump down to 24 gauge wire um, you have to kind of compensate the diameter of the links that you're making and I'll see if I can find that and post that on my Facebook page or something um, anyway so that you're also going to need a draw plate eventually the same wooden draw plate that I used in the last video and then a pair of scissors or cutters cut the links, okay? And then of course the weaving tool, but we'll talk again about that in a second. So that's all for this video. I'll get this one kind of uploaded today and then I'll try to start weaving. I have to make some more links and once I do all that, then I'll come back and make a video and show you how to do the rest. Thanks for watching.